Hi, welcome back to Discovering Patterns in the Microbiome. In this video, we'll be talking about beta diversity. Uh, this is one of the steps that we perform after we've processed all the sequences and generated an OTU table. Um, so beta diversity, as we mentioned, is, is the diversity between environments. And uh, so, for example, we looked at this plot from the Human Microbiome Project showing the overall uh, clustering of the different body habitats by, the, by their microbiomes. And there are a couple of other interesting figures in that paper that give you an example of how you can uh, look at beta diversity. So this is, this is a plot of the beta, beta diversity between samples within each body site. So um, for example, there's more, uh, there's more variability between samples on the skin. So you see higher uh, intersample distance on the skin within those skin body sites than you see um, intersample distance or interpersonal difference in the oral body sites in here. And uh, another nice figure there examines the beta diversity between replicates and between different visits for people. So uh, technical replicates fortunately have the lowest, um, the lowest overall change between them, uh, the lowest beta diversity. And then between visits is a little bit, uh, is a little bit lower than between subjects. So um, the same subject over time tends to be um, less different from his, himself or herself uh, than from another person. Beta diversity is a measure of the overall change in the whole community. That's what it's intended to be. So it takes into account the whole distribution of species and uh, can, can be run on species, OTUs, genus level, uh, phylum, genes, and so on. And uh, so here's an example from a dietary study that I helped analyze a few years ago where um, where our collaborators had given people a uh, controlled diet over a period of time. And this is a plot where it's, it's showing which samples are most similar to one another, but the samples that, and the samples are colored by subject. So if you look at each of the subject's clusters, first of all, each subject has a different microbiome, um, which is normal. But if you look at each of the clusters, there's one point that um, tends to be an outlier in a lot of them, and that's the initial time point before the dietary intervention. So it's a nice way of seeing that there was, on average, an overall shift in the community. You can run beta diversity in Chime. Most of the common beta diversity metrics are in there. There are some fancier ones, with, but, but with some really important applications uh, that, are, uh, that are in R that we're going to talk about too. So, um, so this is a list of all of the various beta diversity metrics that are in there. Now, we're going to start with Euclidean distance. This is the most common distance metric, uh, not in microbiome analysis, but just in general. That's just like the, the actual um, distance in space between two points. And I think of it as the most dangerous distance. So um, the, uh, the problem is it's simple, everyone knows it, but it actually does a really poor job of measuring ecological distances between communities. And, um, and uh, I, I think of it as being analogous to the square knot, which is, or the overhand knot, which is the most dangerous knot in rock climbing, because it's the knot that everybody knows, it's really easy to tie, but it comes undone um, very easily. So um, we're going to examine Euclidean distance on a, a nice study of the Guerrero Negro microbial mat. Um, this, was, uh, this was in collaboration with Norm Pace's group a few years back. So it's basically this microbial, microbial mat um, that is, uh, has different bugs living at each layer. And they had sampled each of the layers, and then we got to analyze the data. So, um, so in order, to, in order to run beta diversity and then visualize it, we have to have some way of taking the huge intersample distance matrix, which is going to tell you 
all of the distances, ecological distances, between every pair of samples, I mean, every sample and every other sample. So it's all of the pairwise distances. We have to take that huge matrix and somehow collapse it into two dimensions so that we can uh, view it on the screen. And there are ways, a number of different ways to do this. The most common way in, in microbiome analysis is principal coordinates analysis. Um, it's basically, uh, it, it's, it's quite similar to principal components analysis, if you happen to know that one. Um, but it's uh, principal components analysis is, is sort of like doing principal coordinates analysis with a Euclidean distance. So the nice thing about principal coordinates analysis is it lets us put any distance metric in. Euclidean, Bray Curtis, Unifrac, all of these other ones that we're going to talk about. So, um, so the easiest way to generate beta diversity plots in Chime is actually through the core diversity analyses script. And um, to run that, you pass in an OTU table, um, an output folder. You have to tell it uh, what's the, what, at, at what level to rarify the data. Um, so this is 950 sequences per sample. You have to pass in a phylogeny that tells how the different OTUs are related to one another, and that's so it can calculate some phylogenetic diversity metrics. And then you have to give it a mapping file. Uh, the dash V just tells it to be verbose and print out lots of output. So I'm going to show you the output from this um, in this uh, in this particular analysis, this is of the global gut data. Um, it's a, actually a subset of 66 adults that I pulled out. And you'll see in, the, in this output folder, there's an index.html. So you want to open that in, um, in your favorite web browser. I have it open already in, in Chrome. And you get this nice little summary output from Chime that, that gives you uh, information about the biome table. Um, it gives you uh, taxonomic information, alpha diversity, beta diversity, and so on. But we're just going to look at beta diversity right now. So if you go to where it says PicoA plot and uh, click index.html, you get this nice 3D plot. And um, here it's, it's, it's actually showing you the first three dimensions of principal coordinates analysis. Now, I'm not going to go into details about how principal coordinates analysis works. We'll be doing that later on in the course. Uh, but it's basically trying to show you, as best as possible, all of the distances between the samples. So um, here we can rotate this around and see which samples are similar to one another. Right now, it looks like they're colored by the sample ID, which isn't very informative. So if we go over to colors. Um, we can, we can. Oh, these are colored by age. Um, we can color them by age group, but these are all adults, so there's nothing interesting there. Uh, body site, they're all stool samples, but if we look at country, now we see this really strong separation. So the blue samples are from the USA. The red and orange are from Malawi and Venezuela. And pretty much any way you look at it, these are, um, these are very separate distributions. So, um, so this, is, this is the best that we can do to visualize the, uh, the whole beta diversity matrix, is find some way to project it down into two or three dimensions and then show that um, you know, on a computer screen or a piece of paper. Now. Um, the, so this is, this is a very nice way of examining whether any of the factors in your experiment are related to, um, to the microbiome. So for example, let's look at sequencing run. These data were run on two different sequencing runs. It would be really bad if, um, if the data split according to sequencing run because we'd have a big batch effect. But instead, um, Instead, it looks like sequencing run didn't really matter that much. So that's good news. So anyway, that's, that's how we're looking at this. For the rest of this video, we'll be sticking with just, uh, just a 2D representation of the first two axes of variation. Now, um, 
how do we generate Euclidean distances? Well, we're actually going to do this. Um, we're going to do this in R, and I have this in the code browser for the course. So uh, if you go to the course repository and visit the code browser, you can see this beta diversity um, number four here using the Guerrero Negro data. And this tells you everything you need to do to get this working. So uh, these are commands that you would run in R. So you need R installed. And then uh, you'd have to install the biome and the vegan package if you don't have them. So you only need to run that once. Load the packages. Then um, this is how we load the data. Load the metadata. That's uh, the mapping file that tells uh, information about the samples. And then um, here's where we're going to calculate distance. So we're going to calculate we're going to calculate three different distance metrics: Euclidean, Bray Curtis, and chi square. Um, the first one we'll look at is Euclidean. So once we have the OTU table read in, we just run this dist command, and we store it. I'm, I just made up a variable named uh, d euc that I store that distance matrix in. This is the command we would use to run principal coordinates. So that's taking the whole distance matrix and collapsing it down to the best two axes and storing it in this pc.uc uh, variable. I'm making up a color gradient that goes from red to blue that we're going to use to color the principal coordinates plot according to the depth of the samples in that microbial mat. Here's where I pull the, the depth out, or this is actually which layer the sample was taken from, uh, from that metadata table. And then here's where we plot. So we plot the first um, coordinates, the first axis of coordinates, the second axis of coordinates. For colors, I'm going to use the, the red to blue gradient, but it's, it's indexed by whatever, um, whatever layer the sample came from. And so let's use some big points and we'll plot filled circles. And this is the plot we get. So um, what can you see? Well, clearly there's some kind of gradient going on here, um, going from, from the shallow samples to the deep samples. Although, um, although it's not perfect, perfectly obvious, and there might be some other ways that we can look at it. So, um, so that's what we get out of Euclidean. The next one we're going to look at is chi-square. So chi, the chi-square distance actually works really well for gradients. And, um, and we're going to be studying it later on when we dig into how you, do, uh, how you do ordination, like alternatives to principal coordinates analysis. So chi-square is uh, it's like the chi-square statistic. Uh, these are the formula for how you calculate it. Um, so uh, I invite you to pause the video and, and read through this and make sure you understand. And then let's look at how, uh, how those plots look. So um, we're going to use the same approach, so um, except that here we're actually using a, a, a command from the vegan package in R to calculate the chi-square distances. So this is called uh, the CCA command. And I'm going to pull the uh, distance matrix out of there. Um, I'm also pulling the principal coordinates out of there. And then we're going to plot it. So actually, that's right here. So same type of plot. And this one looks, it looks a little bit better in the sense that um, the first axis, PC1, is perfectly correlated with the layers. So this is really an amazing plot because it's showing that, um, that the, the top layer, which is in, um, I guess, blue. So the top layer in blue is most similar to um, the second layer. And the second layer is most similar to the top layer and the third layer. And the third layer is kind of in between the second and the fourth. And it's monotonic. It's this perfect ordering. Um, so 
it's a really nice biological result, and we can see it very well graphically with, with chi-square. So this is what we get from chi-square. The last distance metric that I'm going to show you is Bray Curtis. So Bray Curtis, um, the, the way it works is you walk through each of the species in a particular sample. So remember, beta diversity is comparing two different samples. And we want to find out overall how different their microbiomes are. So you walk through each of the species in each sample. And um, for each species, you find which sample has the lowest uh, value. And you take the sum of those lower values. So that's shown um, here as Cij. So that's the, the low value. Um, you, and then you divide by the total count for all of the species in, in each of the samples. So Bray Curtis is, the way I think of it is it's how much does one sample kind of undershoot the other sample in, in terms of the, um, the abundance of, uh, of a bug. And so it's, it's the sum of all of the lowest values for all of the species divided by the total sum of all the species. And Bray Curtis is, uh, is a nice ec uh, ecological distance with a lot of history and macroecology. It tends to work very well in the microbiome, too. You can try lots of other ecological distances, uh, Morrisita horn, um, uh, uh, Manhattan distance. There are many, but they, uh, uh, Hellinger, but they often give you basically the same results. So let's look at the code for Bray Curtis. That's actually up here. Um, same thing, we, uh, we calculate Bray Curtis distances here. Uh, again, we're using this vegan package to do Bray Curtis. Then this is where we get the principal coordinates. And then we're going to make the plot right here. And here's what we get. Now, I want to point something out. Um, the, uh, the plot here is upside down relative to the other plots, but that actually doesn't matter. The, um, the sign of the axes, the first axis and any of the axes in principal coordinates analysis is totally arbitrary. So you could flip this upside down and it would be the same. All the plot is showing you is the relative distances between the samples. So, um, so that's what we get from Bray Curtis. Here I've flipped it over for you. And here's a comparison of the three. So what do you see? Well, um, first of all, this data set is so clean that they kind of all work reasonably well. Which one does best, though? Well, um, if, if you're trying, if you're looking at just the first axis of variation in the distance matrix, that's, that's PC1. Only one of these metrics sorts the samples correctly, according to the gradient, and that's chi-square. So Euclidean has a bunch compressed on the, on the blue end, and Bray Curtis also has some compressed on the blue end as well. Um, so uh, chi-square chi -square is actually really good at identifying gradients in data, and it's the distance metric that underlies correspondence analysis, which is an ordination technique we'll talk about later. But the, the main takeaway is, if you've got gradients, you might want to try chi-square. So in summary, um, beta diversity measures the, the diversity between communities. In general, most people use Bray Curtis or Unifrac or both in the microbiome. Um, we haven't talked about Unifrac yet. That's going to be in another video. And a last, chi-square is usually the best, um, the, the best to use for gradients. And uh, as I said, Unifrac will be discussed in the next video.